channel. If you're new here, I'm Ron. Thanks for stopping by. It's always nice to have you. If you follow my channel, you know I do a lot of drone related content, but today I'm going to talk about the one wheel or if you own a, a pint, a one wheel pint or an XR, whatever you own, this is gonna to apply to you. This is gonna be riding uh, those one wheels down at the beach. Now, if you, again, if you follow my channel, you know I live in New Jersey, and over in New Jersey, we've got a ton of beaches over here. Some are great to ride your one wheel at, and some are not so good to ride your one wheel at. Again, I've been riding my one wheel for a couple of years now, and I've got, just to give you a little, myself a little credibility here, I've got over a thousand miles. Actually, I just noticed I have actually a thousand miles on my one wheel XR, a little clip up here. Um, so I do have some mileage under my belt to make some recommendations to you, and I'm gonna make seven recommendations or tips for you that might help you enjoy your one wheel down at the beach. So let's get right into it. So the first one's gonna be low tides, the best time to ride. High tides often not gonna leave you much room to ride on the compact area of the beach. Not all sand is created equally. Some sand just packs better than other sand. Good rule of thumb, if you can make a ball, roll it up in your hand a little bit, make a ball out of the sand, that's generally the better, this better sand to work with or ride on. Wildwood New Jersey beaches have better packed sand than beaches north of it in New Jersey. I hear beaches in North Carolina, Outer Banks are really good to ride your one wheel on as well. Bottom line, beach sand varies even with in the same state. So just because you can ride on one beach, for example in Florida, doesn't mean it's gonna be good at another beach in that same state. Daytona Beach, for example, is also a great beach to ride on because the sand is very compact. My wife and I used to make a lot of sand castles and down at the beaches, not so much anymore. I kind of got burnt out on it. But if you can make a good sand castle uh, at a particular beach, that's also gonna have typically good compact sand that's gonna be excellent to ride on. And of course, common sense, if you go down and walk around close to the water and you're not sinking into the sand, then that's good sand to ride on also. Anything that's compact, hard packed sand is the kind of beach you wanna ride on, but not all beaches are gonna be good for the one wheel. With that being said, watch out for sinkholes in the sand. Basically be careful riding too close to the water as the tide can make the sand look flat, but with the water just coming in, the sand may not be fully packed yet, especially if you're a bigger rider. Case in point, here's a clip here that I found a little sinkhole. It's pretty much where the sand looked like it was perfectly flat. The tide must have come in and kind of just kind of uh, covered up where there might have been. Maybe somebody had previously dug a hole or, you know, that's probably what it was. And as soon as I came over top of what looked to be perfectly flat, the tire just sunk into the sand. Again, I'm a bigger rider, I'm over 200 pounds, six foot, and then you got the weight of the board. So you gotta remember that all the weight of your board is just in that one point on the lower part of your tire. So, you know, you're talking 250 pounds, someone, someone like myself, 260 pounds with the board, pressing down on that sand. So in this case, I just, sunk into the sand. So be aware, it can happen. I don't think it's that common, but take it slow at first. Okay, next tip. If you're doing any flying for your travel, consider using a company like Supra. They can ship your one wheel board to you. It'll be there waiting for you when you arrive at your destination. I've used that company, Supra, before when traveling to Florida the other year and can personally recommend them. I'll leave a link below if you wanna check them out. And I've done a separate video previously on this channel about them and I'll put the link up here somewhere. You can check that as well or if you've never even ridden the one wheel before, it's a good way to test one out. They'll ship it to you, you can ship it back, you can play with it. Um, a lot of the boards are brand new, so something to consider. Tip number three, always wear a helmet. I can't stress this enough, anyone can take a bad fall, so it's always a good idea to be wearing a helmet anytime you're riding. Okay, next tip. As tempting as it may be to ride in the water down by the ocean, I wouldn't recommend it. Salt water can be very corrosive to the motors and the mechanical parts of your one wheel. Um, can you do it? Yes, but I'm not gonna recommend it. Next tip, start out slow on a beach that you're not familiar with. Get the feel for the area of the train before you kick things into high gear. Just like any sport, it's just a good idea to take your time and check the terrain out. Make sure there's no obstacles, pitfalls. Um, you're not gonna come up on some big, I don't know, rock or uh, branches or you know anything on a beach that may interrupt your ride. So take it slow at first, check out the terrain, and then come back down and you know hit it at a little higher speed if, if you're comfortable with that. And I also wanted to throw up a clip here where I 
took my one wheel over to Holland Ridge Farms. It's a tulip farm over in New Jersey. Great place to take some pictures. I actually went riding over there. I thought it would just make for some nice footage. So I'm gonna show that here as well in the video. And before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, ring that bell for future notifications. It's always appreciated. Ride safe guys, and we'll see you in the next video.